yeah, so this is the final list that I came uh, decided to go with. It was 41 cards, uh, probably would consider cutting a card. I haven't decided what that will be yet. But I built the deck around the fact that I've got three Pot of Desires in there. That means I'm going to be playing three of's because I am I am hopelessly unlucky. Mathematics aside, which should be the only deciding factor in a decision, if I do not play three of the primary colours, I will always end up banishing the two that I have in my deck and it will start to seriously impact me. And I want to take maximum advantage of being able to bait out opponents' Ash Blossoms with the Pot of Desires first, so I do play three of those. Uh, I'll start with the Hand Trap lineup though. So free draw on Lockbird, one max C. That's very unusual sort of hand trap lineup because normally you'd play free max Cs, free Ash Blossoms, but I'm looking to just win the game on turn two. And draw on Lockbird is much stronger at shutting down opponents' turns and making them crippled for turn one than Ash Blossom. Ash Blossom I think is kind of great if uh, you want something that does something on both the going first and going second, but I'm only exclusively going second, so I want my opponent to pass, and then I'm just gonna combo and destroy them. I only play the one max C because I kept finding a lot of the times uh, I would draw duplicates of them or I'd just get Ash Blossom and it would just start to feel a little bit bad. I don't actually need a lot of cards to combo off. I kind of just really want my opponent to not keep playing Yu-Gi-Oh after I activate it. So I felt like in terms of space, this card was actually doing a lot less for me than what I wanted it to. Yeah, plus now, the intention. Only... The intention of the deck is to go second, so you're not going to be using Max C to protect your arrival boards the way most modern decks would. Exactly. So like, I'm very much looking forward to uh, just comboing off. So I just really need board breaker cards, and Max C is not one of those. Uh, my free kaijus, it also has to be the wind card uh, kaiju as well, specifically for barrier statue. If you play any other kaiju and they barrier statue, you can't play the kaiju. And this card is absolutely insane. It deals with so many problems in the format. Your opponent's one big boss monster negates. It clears it clears out in a gate. It's something that you can just beat up with your access code talker. You can also destroy it with your access code talker's effect. Uh, it's all around, uh, I believe that almost every deck in a format that's planning to go second needs to play a Kaiju. Uh, it beats a rival, it beats, uh, it, does, it doesn't quite do the job entirely on its own against, um, uh, which deck is it? The Lyrilus deck, but it's, it gives you a chance and that's something that you just need to, to sneak through. Uh, it also deals with uh, Utopia Futures, I think it is, F futures or something the one that negates uh yeah monster and control. future so you kind of need the kaijus yeah there he is you've got the ultra rare one on the top row oh yeah sorry it's because i owned one i didn't know that <laughs> i was looking at cards <laughs> i didn't have good. yet <laughs> this card this card is done but also kaijus deal with stuff like this it gives you a way to play the only big downside to remember with the kaijus is any turn that you commit the kaiju you can't use transcode talker and that does then mean that your scuffed access code talker kills uh, aren't great. I'll explain what a scuffed access code talker is a little bit later. So for the main deck, we are playing one blue. Uh, the reason for that is you kind of only want to special summon it in situations where your opponent's interrupted you and you just need to get an extra body down. You can use this to search for our one-off Gachiri and it comes up occasionally, but it's kind of more of a freestyling card. You're more using this when your opponent is forcing you into an uncomfortable position. It's a great card, but you don't really want to play more than one of this. It's also, a it's also a level 1, so the liability behind it is you can't use it to make uh, the update jammer. Yes. However, it does change its level to five if or to 4 if you use it to search for the Gachiri. Yeah, you just got to give up a body on the field to get the Gachiri. And ultimately, uh, what I want in an ideal situation is a link to two monsters and the Gachiri. So the two monsters then become a... Uh, update jammer and then the gachiri update jammer and my link to become the access code talker you order the events the triggers in a way that access code talker is the first thing results it prevents your opponent from responding and then gachiri goes off and makes access code talker unaffected by everything and then the update jammer gives it two attacks and then at that point your opponent can't really do anything to interact with yeah. Uh, your access code talker so in those so scenarios where like splash mage brings something back and then this is your only other monster and it summons itself from hand you can still make the update by using this to tribute the other monster and then summoning the Gachiri and using Gachiri and this at level 4 as your two level 2 or hires. But we'd really prefer not to have to do that. Typically, the Gachiri yeah. searches to play around things like Imperm in the battle phase. Gachiri is letting you win games. It takes away any potential acts. And once you put yourself in a position where you've hand-read the opponent, played through all their negates, 
You want to be then playing around with what kind of outlandish thing could my opponent do to win, and Kachiri is perfect for that. So we play that also as a one-off. There is a common-ish mistake. Um, it's not uncommon, it's just something that only happens to like you, it happens to you once, and if I can prevent it from happening to somebody, that would be great. This guy negates its effects, and if you do special summon this card from your hand, I can't tell you the number of times I've seen like someone plays like Splash Mage, and then their opponent like uses the Imperm or the Veiler on it, and they're like, okay, well now I'll use the field spell to summon green, and then Gachiri as my extender, and the card they target with the Gachiri is the Splash Mage. And the Splash Mage is already negated, so the Gachiri fails to negate it and won't come down, and then you use the effect that turn and the Gachiri is now stuck in your hand forever. You do have to be super careful, like, try using it on the card you summon with the eye land rather than on, like, your link monsters, because you'd be surprised how often people will hold something for Splash Mage, and then Gachiri will get stuck in your hand, and it's a really bad time. You don't want that. Gachiri is also great in a case where you just need to get an extra body down to make a scuffed access code talker. Uh, you can just do it by summoning it. It's not ideal in those situations, because you don't get the protection effect, but it can let you extend through... Uh, situations that would be really bad for you. Mm. So then we play three of each of the primary colors, which is going to be red, yellow, and purple. Obviously, that's not real primary colors, but uh, Achichi is the uh, search for a monster. This is generally in our hands where we only have op access to one of our colors. We want Achichi because uh, Achichi searches for yellow, uh, or in situations where you've already got the yellow, you can then go ahead and get the purple, uh, yeah, Hikari or uh, Doyong. So your your general line is going to be going for red, summoning red, red's getting you one of the other two colors, ideally yellow, and then from there yellow then gives you access to a revival spell, or it can get you I Met You, and then you can get access to those three colors. As long as you've got access to two of the colors, or even in just red and you can resolve it, you can do a full combo. It doesn't matter what the other cards in your hand are, you will be able to full combo with it, which is why I really like this deck. Yeah, you uh -huh. have... I met you, Picari, and Achichi create a triangle of sorts that all get to each other, and then Cyber, Cynet Mining lets you get to the yellow or the red one as well, and that gives you 11 copies of what is ultimately a one-card combo through no yeah, hand no. traps. And don't get me wrong, there'll be games where you manage to... No because this deck does play a lot of cards that are good for breaking boards that don't do anything. So we're going to max out on consistency from this point, because we know that if I can get to resolve one card, I can full combo. So the rest of the deck is going to be board breaker cards or stuff to play for. Oh yeah, we played the one um, Baruru. We can always search for the Baruru with uh, Slyburst Kid in the extra deck. And then this lets us dump uh, from our deck to the graveyard the next monster in the deck, which is a level six, I forget its name. Uh, Dan Mori, which is kind of important for if we are forced to go into Arrival, which is if we're going first, we want to go Arrival Graveyard, because that essentially gives us an extra negate and prevents an opponent's access code talker clearing out our Arrival. There are also cute things with this, where this can negate and attack, uh, when your opponent attacks you, so you can stop your opponent ATKing you. Uh, it's all around a very good card. It's unfortunate when you drop because you can't summon it with the AI land. Mm. But you can always discard it with a uh, sign up mining or something. But you usually use Buru to send it to the graveyard if you haven't already... If you haven't completed your trio, then you'll probably send one of the trio if you're going for the OTK. Yeah. There there are games where you start also on um, AI, uh, AI Met You, and you're using that to search for red, and then red is searching for yellow and becoming infant, and then yellow has to search for the Reborn spell, either one of them. And that's bringing back red, and when that happens, you don't have access to Doyon. And that's another time where Baru will come up, because that is where you can make Cyrus Wicked out of yellow and the infant. And then when you activate that Reborn spell and bring back red, yellow, doesn't make a huge difference, uh, the Wicked can search for the Baruru, and then still make your Splash Mage and so on from there. But your um, Baruru can actually dump the Doyon, and then if Splash Mage brings back Doyon, his effect is negated. But Baruru and Doyon synchro summoning for seven, Baruru can also bring back the same Doyon. 
and that doesn't get negated, and that's where the Doyon can actually bring back the red that you had normal summoned, and then you still have the Doyon in play next to the Synchro Monster and the Splash Mage. The Synchro and the Doyon will still make Update Jammer. You still go on to kill from there, and you still have your normal summon as a follow-up extender. So that is the other fantastic thing Baruru does to the deck, is that it does let you use the effect of what Splash Mage brings back by Synchroing afterwards and bringing back the monster again without giving up anything. You just actually get to resolve. In the case of I, I Met You openings, you get both effects of Doyon on there, including the ability to get back the I Met You for next turn if you don't succeed at killing them. Yeah, it gives you an extra follow-up. You don't want to play more than one of this, though, uh, because you can see the kid. And also, it's ideally not one of the trio. I would consider dropping one Doyon, but the problem is, again, I'm just so unlucky with Pot of Desires uh, that I I felt more comfortable playing three of each of my primary colors because Doyon and any other of the Agnisters can also make a scuffed access code talker. Yeah, Doyon is a really good at like following up as well. Doyon is a one of in a correctly built Agnister deck in advanced format. Where Master Duel is a best of three, we cannot risk losing like the Doyon to the Desires that way. Um, yep. Just it, It's just not worth the massive, massive risk that comes with it, because we only get the one chance every opponent. Um, you're not going to lose him to Desires twice in one match unless like it's just literally not your day to win, in which case there was nothing you were going to do, it wasn't your day. But... Uh, in, in Master Duel, and especially where he is just a normal, so it costs nothing to get them, I completely agree with 3 Doyon. Yeah, it's uh, it's been working out for me, but like if you guys want to experiment, if you do want, are very much OCD and want to get it down to 40 cards, that would probably be the first, first cut uh, from from this list. Then, over to the Spells and Traps. So we play Harpy's Feather Duster uh, because Eldlich just needs to die in a fire. Um, and this is also very strong against uh, Tri Brigade, clearing out the uh, revolts. And we also play free uh, Lightning Storms. Lightning Storm is insane, especially in a deck where we're always choosing to go second. 90% of our opponents are making us go second. I didn't experience the people disconnecting from the game uh, before the games even started, uh, which was an exploit people were using to protect their rank points when they always wanted to go first, because I always wanted to go second and I'd just break their board. So I just, I made their days worse. Yeah. Uh, this card is super strong. It you can do you got to remember the tricks with the field spell where you can set an additional field set a field spell over your current one to clear it up. But this card overperforms for me. Like I never feel bad seeing this in my opening hand. If I draw two, you can always throw one out to sign up mining. Yeah, I, I also appreciate that unlike Duster, if you do get a tri brigade opponent, this can actually regeki them, which is just a better interaction. Where regeki yeah. is useless against Eldlich and Harpy's Feather Duster is borderline useless against tri brigade. It's really, really cool that Lightning Storm is amazing in those, every sure. matchup. Yeah, Lightning Storm is always good. I mean, actually, it's not great against the Utopia deck because they can banish the ZS uh, yes. guys in the graveyard to prevent their guy being destroyed. But this card lets you get through Appaloozas. Uh, it lets you get through the Luralusk field. I mean, they still have to deal with the um, barrier statue uh, it, it basically forces your opponent to react if they've got negation uh this is just all around a great card especially for a deck going second and the fact that we get to abuse this at free copies makes breaking boards a lot easier and we combine that with our kaijus as well uh for the for negates as well as and, everyone gets one for free quote unquote from that 10 pack set is also very very nice everyone should have this card and everyone should be playing this card yeah yeah this is great uh, i played two copies of sign up mining sort of for do not like to run these in multiples, even though one can throw out the other. Ash Blossom was incredibly prevalent in the format, so I was quite hesitant to play this, but you can also do tricks like drop the AI land, and then you can banish a, a Ag Mister monster from your graveyard, and you can reset the AI land, and then you can activate it, and you can go from there. But AI land is also, sorry, the um, Silent Mining is also a way that you can search for blue, which you don't have a way of doing uh, with uh, AI Met You. Uh, so you can also use this to then grab the colors if you need them in certain situations. It's very flexible and it's an excellent start card for you to go get red uh, or get yellow depending on what your opening hand is. And you can also drop a Damari with it as well. We play one copy of AI Contact. Uh, this is a card that you don't resolve very often. Usually uh, if your game goes beyond turn two, like you weren't able to OTK and you need to refresh. 
Uh, this is actually quite good at drawing a bunch of... Trying your combo, if it doesn't work, then using this to set up uh, some interaction, like infinite impermanences and stuff. Uh, I, you've always got to be a little bit careful when you do this, because if, if you do throw away your extra field spell and they get rid of it, uh, it's something you just have to take into consideration. Uh, so you, you kind of want to do this quite late. You don't really want to do it early in your in your combos. Uh, then we play three copies of AI Met You. This card's absolutely insane. It does reduce your life points if you do not end the game on the spot. We're aiming to OTK as often as possible, so the 2300 damage that we take is not something that comes up so often, but uh, it, it can happen if your opponent, for example, max sees you or you're forced to use this on your opener and then they make some negate plays and you can't play. Uh, you just have to keep in mind that you've then made it easier for your opponent to OTK you back. But it's a great searcher. Uh, this is actually also one of the drawbacks your extra deck kind of fixed. There's things that you can't take out of your extra deck that you don't normally, that, that you may not necessarily summon. For example, the uh, Light Dragon or the Phoenix. The Phoenix has some niche uses. But we, we have to play these in order to uh, enjoy the benefits of uh, I Met You. Yeah, the uh, the Light Dragon is what you reveal for the Light. Fire Phoenix is what you reveal for the Fire. You reveal the access code as the Dark because not everyone actually plays the Go First variant and you don't want to tell them that you're on it. Um, Trans code is the reveal for the Earth. The Gachiri, yeah. There yeah. is a Earth Agnes that you can special summon if you control one, but we've already got which covers that, and then the Earth one doesn't really do anything else, because yes. we're not playing the fusion monster. And there is no water, it's not worth playing Shooting Cove Talker, and the Water Adding Mister is a main deck monster, it's a ritual and it's really bad. Um, yeah. As far as Wind is concerned, we actually don't need to use I Met You to search for Wind because of Wicked, but we'll get to that when we get to the extra deck. Yeah. Uh, then we've got the one-off uh, FA... Actually, really use the Graveyard Effect to protect your monsters. Uh, it just very rarely comes up. You can't protect uh, Access Code Talker because it's not an Agnister monster, but this is another extender. It's another card that you can use after you've baited all of your opponent's interaction uh, to follow up. And it's also very important for to play one copy of this and the other Revival spell, which we'll get to, because it lets you uh, panic into Arrival if uh, your OTK doesn't work out because your opponent's on his Mechorochi or something, something like that. Yeah, AI Idol Reborn is... This card is absolutely insane. It's total gas. Uh, you get to get a monster back at uh, quick, uh, quick spell speed, so this means even in the battle phase, you can battle phase, you can pull it back. This is actually how you OTK through Mecha Uh If you summon the Cyberus Quantum Dragon and you make your two attacks, they summon the Orochi and then you attack Quantum, you can use this to get back the yellow Agnister, uh, Picari, I think it is. And then you can uh, get the numbers, uh, just just the right number. You can get it oh, it's just about uh, with this. And also you can get this back, uh, and then you can resolve it in the opponent's end phase, so you can get two activations of any of your AI colors. And also it's got a graveyard effect where you can banish it to get back another card as well. This card's just all around great. You don't want to play more than one, because we're going to replay this a bunch of times, you can only play it once per turn. We've got so many ways of accessing it. Yeah, and where like these are effectively the same card in most situations, you play one of each because they are both once per turn. And yeah. yellow, if you draw this one, yellow searches for this one. If you draw this one, yellow searches for this one. It's always the same. And speaking yeah. of cards that yellow will most often search for. Yeah, so Ignister AI Land, this card turns all of your monsters into extenders. Well, with the exception of uh, Dan Mari. But. This lets you special summon each of your Agnistus monsters once per color uh, from your hand, as long as your main empty. So this will let you play through so much of your opponent's negation. Like your opponent really has to go out of their way to try and shut you down, or they have to make sure you don't have access to this field spell. So as Dan was just mentioning, we can search for this for yellow. The general strategy being is that you want to make sure you have at least two accesses to your field spell. Uh, if you use, if you don't have the field spell and you use your yellows to get the AI met you, and then you summon Dark Infant, and then they negate the Dark Infant, you are in a really, really tough place, because then your kind of AI met you is the only viable thing to continue playing, is getting Gachiri, and you don't want to be using Gachiri this early in a combo. So you go, you try to always secure that you have two AI land, that's why you got to be careful with your AI contact, but because of that, you don't force your opponent, because they know how dangerous this card to push negates through on things where you potentially already have that option. 
Uh, if you've already got access to two, then you can use your yellow search on something else. But yeah. When you're starting, overall, so, when you're starting summon is yellow, and yeah. they don't negate it. You grab the island and be like, okay, they were saving the negate for the infant, and you just clutch the game on them. Um, yeah. If you already have a copy of AI Land, then you search for the I Met You and like you just play as normal, continue the triangle. Like you said, you can get reborn spells, but using yellow to search AI Land is how you body people who don't hand trap yellow. Like the people who are trying to hold it for infant just get punished so hard by that. And then it does mean that you end up with two copies of I Land, which sounds annoying, but it, what it ends up resolving out is that AI contact is just the draw three on the next turn. If you yeah, don't go I, on to kill them that turn, or if you are going first, you will have the ability to use something like this, if not just on your next turn summoning yellow to grab this card, and that search from turn one that they let go through turned into draw three. Yeah, you can also just uh, set the uh, filled spell, the extra copy, over the first one, so the two. Uh, so having two around is also very strong, and you can always get them out of the graveyard if you sign up uh, one away in the later stages of the game when you start improvising. And then the last card we play is three copies in the main deck is three copies of Infinite Impermanence. Now this card is just all around incredible because we can play it as a hand trap. Uh, you can also set it to do stuff uh, if you need to play a longer game. I generally hold this back if I don't know my opponent's deck uh, and I don't know what the breakpoints are. I will hold this back until I'm just trying to break my opponent's board because then I can see exactly what I'm interacting with, and then you can drop this. It's also you're kind of forced to play this, I think, in most competitive decks because you've got to deal with the fact that True King of All Calamities is a legal card for some yeah. crazy reason. Thank you for the follow, Mr. Trevor. Yeah, cheers, Trevor. Uh, welcome to the welcome to the team. So, Infinite Impermanence is all around a great board breaker. You take away one of their negates. It can also turn up uh, uh, Utopia Futures uh, by stopping its negation and also making it that it gets destroyed by Lightning Storm. Uh, it gives you a lot of opportunity to play uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! in that situation. Mm. Un yeah, unrelated, but dragon. on my mind, I, I've always known... I, first of all, I appreciate that his tail makes an infinity symbol. That's really cool. But I've always known this to be the attack card for Cyber Dragon Infinity. Like, you have, like, your burst stream of destructions and stuff. But he's falling apart in the artwork. It makes it looks like he's actually or, being destroyed. Or he's being, like, Iron Man assembled. <laughs> okay, could be that. But it I just mean, looks I, like a piece I didn't of draw the wing card, is flying so. away. It's, uh, it's interesting. Yeah, but Infinite Impermanence is just an all-around great card. I'm thinking if you're doing any kind of deck building, uh, your your gems should be going for the generic cards that are only in the map pack. So that's going to be things like Lightning, Storm, uh, Infinite Impermanence, like Drawn Lockbirds, uh, Max Seas. Like, that's really where your gems should be going. You're using the secret packs as your source of actually getting the theme cards. So... If we go over to the extra deck now, uh, there's two. There's a there's a couple of different ways. There's there's an all in on the OTK going first, and then you play this deck a little bit different. You play this deck differently. This is where we had the Sky Striker tech with the Sky Striker Eager boosters to just force through things like a in Dark Infant for your opponent's negation. But the I found that this did not. It took up too much space, and it stopped me being able to play first in the opponent. That might in the event that my opponent put me on first, or I needed to yes. panic and change my strategy so for the extra deck there are a couple of flex slots but ones that aren't so first and there foremost is... you have to play this card yeah th I, there, I would argue that there are like there's not really any flex slots in this deck but that's just that's my opinion so uh yeah if we start with the dark infant you have to play two of these because if your opponent destroys one you need to be able to click monster zone so this to make a super powerful arrival. It gets you your field spell. It's terraforming that you don't have to play in the main deck. Any of your attic mister monsters could make this guy. Uh, he's just all around incredible. And he he very much draws hate to him because people don't want you having access to the field spell. Yeah. So you can get Ash Blossoms when you've already got the field spell. Uh, you can use him to get your second one for AI contact. It's He's the dark for Wicked's effect. He is... Yeah. Uh... He, he is everything for this deck. But most importantly, um, the second one also allows you to just like try again on the following turn. Um, th this deck has a whole lot of like, I went first, so I did the line, and then I went second, and I did the line again. And that's why there's two of a few things in this extra deck. But um, in, in yeah. Dark Infant coming out is what the deck needed. Um, without Dark Infant, this deck was 
like nine normal summons, and if they had any interrupt, you lost the duel. So yeah, infant, infant was just amazing for the deck. And the fact that the second one comes up in the uh, arrival combo to, to use that move effect and change his attribute to divine is just incredible. Yeah, uh, all around, uh, Dark Infant is one of the most powerful cards in the entire deck, without a doubt. Uh, Cypress Wicked is your second in your summon chain. Uh, the key thing with this is that you can banish the infant that you used as the material for this to then search yourself a green uh, Atagnister monster, which you can then special summon with your field spell and start your combo. So this gives you access to your synchro summon. Uh, providing you didn't banish, uh, banish it with the Pot of Desires, in which case then you just don't summon Cyber's Wicked. Yeah. It gives you flexibility to get you, get into the Synchro lines and add another color to your hand. In the Ghost uh, Second variants, this thing is also the only thing that you can't use Eagle Booster on, but it does get chain blocked by the Doyon in the regular lines, so that never comes up. The, yeah. I, the biggest mistake sorry, sorry. people make with this is that they don't summon underneath it, <laughs> that, that's something oh, I've seen yeah, happen a lot. Uh, and that's another thing that, believe it or not, infant fixes. Uh, when you summon something to the left of Wicked instead of the right, you're like, oh no, and then you can just make infant under it and trigger it anyway. Uh, it's unfortunate, it costs you your infant, but that that is something I've seen infant, two different friends of mine have had infant save them by that. Yeah, uh, this, this card is great, and it also then means the main deck, the colors that we are playing that out of our primary order so great card and it's a dark monster so when you banish the infant you still have a dark monster available for access code tool. absolutely and where you were going to go splash mage anyway because this replaces itself with a body you still have the ability to go into splash mage as you originally would but you bonus another color a foolish burial and a synchro monster all at once yeah it's great great card for the deck uh the splash mage this is where You've got to be a little bit careful. A lot of people hate this one uh, when they play their removal cards uh, because obviously it's a link to, it threatens access code talker. Uh, it's a key part of the combo because it gives you back a body, uh, which you can then use for a synchro play with uh, green. Uh, you can use just this. Uh, you can just summon this and then get back a monster and then summon transcode talker. Uh, and then transcode can bring back this and then you can make a scuffed access code talker, which when I say scuffed access code talker, to clarify that, that's an access code talker that doesn't attack twice, but it's still very it's still very dangerous. It's like not optimal. Yes. Uh, this card is also the last opportunity. As soon as you activate this card, Kaiju is off the table. Yeah. Uh, you you've got you can you can play the Kaiju any point up to this once you activate this. So you have to remember that, uh, and. You're, go, you're, you're pretty much good to go. But a lot of people will remove this, and then you can make the second one, and then make Transcode and go from there. Yes. Also, when you go first, you use one. Then when you go second to kill them, you use the other. Or yeah. if you get Nibiru'd, you end up using the second one on the following turn if you don't have the extending spell. Uh, next would be this fella. Transcode Talker is an absolutely absurd card. You can use it to summon any Link monster. You can't do that in a turn where you've used a kaiju, so if you have committed mental can't transcode talker. Because I've done plenty of times where I've gone, oh okay, yeah, I was like in the early stages when I was learning the deck. Oh, I'll just summon the transcode talker and then get the OTK, and then I realize I can't activate it and I've committed all my monsters to summoning it. Mm -hmm. So the key thing with this is it can get back update jammer. Update jammer is not once per turn when it adds the double attack effect to a monster. So if they Nibiru you in the follow-up part of this is you essentially make transcode then transcode gets back uh the update jammer then update jammer will then make access code uh talker and access code talker then uses transcode talkers rank uh not rank sorry it's uh link, link level yeah uh link rating that's it sorry i'm forgetting my terminology and then it will gain so it's this is how you follow up combos uh, after interruptions and it's also the way that you search for Kachiri using AI. So here's something, I, I have a question for you. I actually had to do this once to play around uh, an Imperm. Have you ever used Splash Mage and Update Jammer to make this guy instead of Access Code? I have not, actually. If you use Update and Splash Mage to make this fella, and then activate 
update jammer's effect, and then use this guy to bring back the update jammer underneath him. The update goes to 25, and he goes to 28 and attacks twice, and they can't target anybody. Don't they have to be pointing towards each other for that to get the attack boost? He does. Sorry, yeah, I'm just thinking, you've got him in the... So where update points up. Oh, yeah, of course, he points up. Yeah, I knew that. So the transcode <laughs> gets the second attack, and then brings back update underneath him, and they're co-linked, and it's 28, 28, and 25. Yeah, so you can get the you can get the OTK that way as well, which is pretty awesome. It's how well, you can do it through a known targeting effect. That's a, a little trick there. I haven't actually used that one, much, but I'll uh, see. Still got room to learn. Uh, access code talker. This is completely non-negotiable. <laughs> yeah. uh, they're both required. They're how you win the game. You make sure that you order the chains correctly. Some note: if you are playing on console. Is you have to make sure i don't know if you can change the settings for link ordering but it will put update jammer above access code talker whenever you do it by default which is not what you want when you resolve the chain you've got multiple optional effects going once access code talker you want to resolve first at the top of the list so you pick everything else and then you pick access code talker chains resolve first in uh last out so then what happens is access code talker stops the opponent responding and then you get all of the effects and protections and then your opponent can't respond to uh, the effect where you destroy your opponent's cards, so you can clear out your opponent's monsters and you can attack twice per game. Little pro tip as well, if you're set to auto, um, <laughs> if your opponents are almost all set to auto. I have won an unfair number of games by using Access Code Talker to pop a Sky Striker link, and when their ray comes back, if they're set to auto, it won't ask them if they want to use the ray, and then you activate Access Code Talker to pop again, and they can't respond with the ray. <laughs> Yeah, they usually concede when that happens, but yeah, it does come up. So that's Access Code Talker, and then we've got uh, just a few slots left to talk about. Uh, we've got... Let's, this that? is basically the if I'm going first or something has gone horribly wrong line. Uh, sure. So if you're going first, you go through Infant, you go through Wicked, you go through Splash Mage, and then what you actually go through is this thing. Yeah, Dark Templar. And Dark Templar lets you... When a monster is... Uh, you get the special summon back uh, any number of uh, Agnister monsters uh, directly to zone two points two. Now, infant's move effect. Fun. Yeah, infant and summoning then... to the bottom left. You want to put this guy in the right so that infant can go in the center zone to this card's corner and then move over out of the way. Yeah, uh, and then it gives you three monsters back, and then that gives you enough to make a rival uh, with maximum power essentially. Now you have to be stupidly careful a rival requires all your attributes to be different infant can call divine that's fine but a lot of people myself included when they use this revival effect they bring back the picari they bring back the achichi that's fine it's a light and a fire but bringing back doyon is the biggest shoot in your own foot you will ever make bring yeah. back the Baruru, the wind or you will not be able to make a rival and it will be a really really sad moment in your life yeah so it's a case if you've got to be aware of that i am going to do combo walkthrough video for this which you can find on our youtube channel over the next two weeks when i get around to doing it so please uh, if you're not following us on youtube go ahead and subscribe and hit the notification button and you'll, I'll do a full breakdown showing you the com basic combos and then talk a bit about freestyling. So for anybody who wants to then sort of just learn how to get into this deck, and by means, two seasons in a row, climb to plat one. In fact, this season, it took me one week to get to plat one. And I have a full-time job as well, so I don't really have time to be doing this all, all the way through. But this deck is incredibly powerful and is massively underrepresented in the current metagame. The arrival of Cybers Attic Nister. This card is... Clifford Towers on steroids. Uh, it's an insane card. It gains a thousand attack for each of the different attributes of link monsters that you used, I believe it is. Mm -hmm. uh, no, link materials. There's a number of link materials that you used. And it's three plus monsters with different attributes. Uh, it's unaffected by all other cards, so your opponent can interact with this. Uh, once per turn, you can just target one other monster on the field, destroy it, and then summon a Cyber's token. So you can make this really big. Usually it ends up at about 5,000. So your primary concern is your opponent making a access code talker and getting up to 5,300 and attacking over this. And this is why we played a Demari because a Demari can go ahead and uh, negate that when that happens. So your opponent tries to go in the battle phase, negate the uh, 
the access code talker and your opponent's game generally ends at that point. Uh, but there's a, quite a few decks like the Lyralist deck where they have to switch into an alternate game plan where they're trying to attack two of the... What's the smaller Xe monster in um, Lyralist called? The one that does the battle damage to the opponent that you would take? I can't remember. Something Nightingale. Yeah, I think it's... Uh... Your yeah, so they, you know, there is a liability when you summon a rival that they can these, but you can use Damari to uh, stop that from happening. Uh, but a lot of decks cannot get through a rival. And if those decks do have a way of getting through a rival, they struggle even harder to get through Cyber's Quantum Dragon. You pretty much put the, force them into Access Code Talker. Yeah, we'll show you in the combo video so that this doesn't go too long, how to summon the Quantum Dragon and a rival together. Yeah, I'll do this in, yeah, in the combo video uh, that we go through. But essentially, while you control a link monster, monster to your opponent controls cannot target monsters you control for attacks, except for this one. They can't target monsters you control for card effects, except this one. Once per turn, it's start a damage step. If it battles an opponent's monster, you can put the opponent's monster back in the hand and it's going to attack again in a row. This card is insanely strong, and when your opponent summons uh, four or more monsters, you can use Cyber's Quantum Dragon to attack one monster, send it back to their hand, attack a second monster, and then your update jammer can uh, destroy three additional cards. So you can actually clear out five monsters and do your double attacks with this. And when you, you can also do a combo with a rival where you this in, and you have a rival, and then they're forced to attack this first. So then it really puts their only outs into Access Code Talker, where they've got to get the attack up, and then they'll have to banish to destroy the Quantum Dragon, because they cannot attack into the Quantum Dragon. And a lot of the other options, again, against Nightingales, when you've got this up, uh, they have to attack into Quantum Dragon. Quantum Dragon uh, is just very good against that. They can't OTK yeah. you through that. If um, they summon got... the Access Code Talker, Damari can negate it on the yeah, res yeah. resolution of its attack game. They have to get something big enough to beat your arrival through the Jan Mari's yeah. negate, and whatever it is they make will then have to attack and be bounced by Quantum Dragon, so it can't even be like a double attacking thing of that size. They have to summon two things that big, and Dan Mari has to not be able to stop either one of them, and it can stop access code. It is a brutal board to get through, and basically yeah. nobody can do it. The you other... can... Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Wait. Uh, it's just, I, I was just moving on to the next thing. Go ahead. 